Should I be really loud with it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have ever operated on a rural fire scene and had a primer failed, you know that that is one of the most stressful scenarios that you can be faced with as a pump operator. The pump operator will literally run out of diesel fuel before they run out of water in the booster tank. A rumble! <laughs> In this video, we are going to show you a technique called burp drafting that is a solution to that common rural water supply problem. The process of burp drafting utilizes onboard tank water on your apparatus and it requires you to open your tank to pump and your tank fill fully when you are operating. So what you are going to do is recirculate your water at a very high rate of speed and what that naturally does is it creates an area of negative pressure at the eye of the pump's impeller. We know there is a law of physics that says we cannot create or destroy matter. So when water is discharged from the pump, something has to come and take its place. In this case, it's water, more water from the booster tank. The faster we spin the impeller, the more water leaves the pump. Therefore, more water has to take its place. And this process happens and uh, repeats itself indefinitely when we are recirculating water from the tank to pump and through the tank fill line. When performing this technique, it is critically important that the pump operator remember that they must have four things. They must have water in the booster tank. They must throttle up to 150 PSI. They must be flowing water somewhere and they must have an intake valve where they can control the flow of water into the pump. If the pumper runs out of water during this process, it will not work. You will have to result, resort back to using your primer, which is fine if the primer is working, but if it has failed and this is why you're employing this tactic, then you are uh, going to have to find another solution. So with uh, burp drafting, what happens is since we know that fluids like areas of negative pressure, air and water both are considered fluids. After we open our tank to pump and our tank fill fully, we will throttle up to 150 PSI on our master discharge gauge. At this point, what we're going to do is crack our master intake valve until we see fluctuation on the master discharge gauge. This signifies that the air in the hard sleeve is being drawn up and into the pump and literally being burped out of the system through the tank fill valve. It is very important that the pump operator recognize that they should only open this intake valve in increments. They should crack that intake valve until they see fluctuation on the master discharge gauge. Once that fluctuation occurs, they should stop and take their hands off the intake valve. Because if they continue to open the valve, what will occur is too much air will come into the pump and the process will stop. Once that master discharge gauge levels out back to 150 PSI or pretty close to it, the pump operator can then go ahead and crack that intake valve a little bit further until there is another drop in the discharge pressure, which signifies that air is being entered into the pump and burped out the system. The operator is going to continue to repeat this process until the intake valve is completely open. Once the intake valve is completely open, the pump operator should easily close the tank to pump valve. And again, it's critically important that the operator easily close the tank to pump valve. If they close it too quickly, any little bit of air pocket that is still in the hard sleeve can get drawn into the pump too quickly and the process will stop. Once the tank to pump valve is completely shut, the operator should then idle down and close their tank fill. If the pump operator started the process with a full tank of water and the tank fill line is left open, the operator will notice that water will overflow out the tank overfill. That is fine if the operator is operating on pavement. However, if we are operating off uh, the road and on grass like we are here, 
we could potentially get the truck stuck. If the pump operator is drafting out of a dump tank, we run the risk of wasting water by dropping it on the, line, on the ground. So it's important to uh, rapidly close that tank fill valve and start the flow of water to either the fire scene or the fill site that the uh, uh, fill site pumper is supplying. So in review, there are a couple key components that must be present in order for this process to work. Number one, there must be water in the booster tank. Now, the booster tank does not have to be completely full, and in fact, it is possible to uh, perform this method with as little as a quarter of a tank of water. All that needs to be available is enough water for the recirculation process to occur. The pump operator must also ensure that they throttle up to the appropriate pump discharge pressure. A good rule of thumb that I follow is throttle up to 150 PSI when performing a burp draft. That will move water within the pump fast enough to create that area of negative pressure and draw that air into the pump and get burped out the tank fill line. Number three, you have to have an intake valve in order for this process to occur. It is also important for the pump operator to recognize and understand the size of the tank fill line. If the tank fill line is too big, the operator will not be able to completely open it. What will happen then is when the operator starts to throttle up, the pump will actually cavitate because the tank fill line is capable of discharging more water than the tank to pump plumbing is capable of uh, providing. Generally speaking, the NFPA 1901 standard says that if the apparatus has a thousand gallon tank or larger, the tank fill plumbing must be two inches in diameter. Two inch plumbing will typically cause a pumper to cavitate if the tank fill is op open all the way and the operator attempts to get to 150 PSI. You will notice in this video with this pumper, we had to slightly gate back the tank fill valve in order to read 150 PSI on this gauge. Okay, so in order to uh, operate efficiently, the pump operator must know the size of their tank fill valve. If it is two inches in diameter, you are going to have to gate back. If it is inch and a half or smaller, you'll be able to open this all the way and recirculate uh, from your booster tank. The operator must also be patient during this process. Dur when you're opening that intake valve, you have to make sure that you only crack the intake valve and you wait until you see the pressure drop and fluctuation level out. Once it levels out, that is your cue to continue opening the intake valve until you see another drop. And finally, 
you must remember to always open fully before you close. And what we mean by that is fully open the intake. Get to the point where the intake valve is completely open before you even think to close the tank to pump. This will create a seamless transition from the tank water to the external source. The most desirable way to perform this technique is to recirculate water through the tank fill valve. And it's important that the pump operator recognize that the tank fill valve is nothing but a self-contained discharge within the pump. By recirculating the water through the tank fill valve, the pump operator will literally run out of diesel fuel in the truck before they run out of water in the booster tank. Some firefighters may have been taught this technique uh, with slight variations. One common variation is to flow water out of the deck gun to achieve a burp draft. While this will work, the operator must understand two things. They have to have a place to discharge the water to, and they have to recognize that they are operating on a time limit. This pumper here has a thousand gallon tank, which means I only have one minute to get my prime before I'm out of tank water. If I do not get it within that one minute, I have to look for another solution uh, to get my prime. Other firefighters have been taught to perform this technique while firefighters are advancing and flowing a uh, hand line in a burning structure. The issue there is that the pump operator may not be aware whether the hand line is flowing or not. If the hand line is not open and water is not flowing in the system, there the burp process will not occur. And in fact, the tank water will actually flow out the hard sleeve and you will lose your booster tank water. The other problem that occurs is when the hand line is flowing water and you attempt to perform a burp, the nozzleman is going to get erratic nozzle reactions as water and air come through the nozzle. So the operator will, the nozzleman will have a period of flow and then a period of either no flow or very diminished flow. In conclusion, remember, practice burp drafting so that way in the event that your primer fails on the rural fire scene, you are still able to establish a reliable prime from a static source. If you want to take your water supply skills to the next level and get greedy with your water, Reach out to the experts at TFT.com.